Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode of the airport, well, of building the city and today it is the outside the airport area, the car park. Short term actually, uh, there's three car parks that make up uh, new, the airport this is based off same standard and that is the north face and the there's the the one just outside the airport which is the northern most northern one to the airport you could say and that is short term there is a small car park for just drop and go there is additionally a medium and a long term car park which I have explained in the live portion that will be at the end of the time lapse. Anyway, as you see on camera, I'm basically preparing the road that is going to be, that's right outside the airport, of, right outside the car park, it is literally the final road of the car park. This one goes around the entire length of the car park and it leads to the way out of the car park. It also is the road that leads to the hotel of this airport. Now I did say previously that there was going to be a hotel now right now I'm just planning out where the next area the next thing that will be which is the which is the uh, roundabout now there are quite a few roundabouts in this area as I've already made apparent and I think I also uh, talked about them in the upcoming uh, live, uh, live portion but yes the actual airport has two uh, small roundabouts in the actual uh, in the in the medium and long term parking there is also the, the one I already did which I did off camera which um, I'll show in the live portion and then there's this one that needs to do the exit roundabout, which I have yet to do. Now, th this road system for the entire airport actually took a while. Now, there's various road systems that lead off. That road I just added there is a temporary road, it's just a placeholder. It just reminds me that there is meant to be a way out. Now, from that roundabout, there is a lot to go off it. Again, I'll discuss that in the in the live portion. Now, here I start making the the entrance into the airport, which is the well, sorry, which is the entrance and exit points. Now. The one I was just working on there was actually the exit point, which has four toll booths. I don't actually quite understand why the, the exit point has the more toll booths. Now here I just was experimenting with different ideas and I couldn't get any of them to really work. So what I go with in the end is what you, what you basically see somewhat, which is I go with... One goes splits into a freeway road. That's because there is a road that leads off the freeway road, which leads into where the train station and the car park, the very small car park for the hotel will be. Now there is like the actual um, hotel has an underground car park, but I actually haven't built that. I don't see the need to because as I figured out when I was doing the actual car park for the hotel pathfinding in this game is actually incredibly stupid I mean it is actually a joke at best I'm still not gonna lie, Six Skylines is actually a really good game I just really don't like the pathfinding so I actually find the pathfinding quite hilarious now here I just try a bunch of different ideas to try and to try and uh, 
expand this road area to try and get try and really make it look like a a real a real life version. Um honestly I I in the end I kind of ended up figuring out what I was doing was completely wrong. So I just go with a really basic road system which came out really well in the end. I don't know if I actually finished it on camera, but as I say I use a lot of move it to just really try and straighten things out. Now originally what I was gonna do for the middle of the road was I was just gonna use uh, the pop the more asphalt to just cover it up and when I actually did it off camera and I'm certain I did this off camera it didn't work out and it frustrated me because it means I had to play with the roads again and yeah fix that it took a while you just see here I continuously mess with the roads try and get everything to look nice now I here I add a distant a small distance area in between the roads which actually exists there again all the roads I am going to do a bunch of details on kind of like what you'll see very shortly on the back road I spend a lot of time just detailing out the roads because I want them to look really good now I'll show you in the live portion but I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with the actual airport of Newcastle I feel like it's very lacking when it comes to DM different details so that actually frustrates me anyway as I continue talking about this I want to actually talk about something else and I, what I want to talk about is live streams now as you probably noticed I do do like to do my like I don't really do live stream that much and I like to live stream off YouTube stupidly I may add because it's not exactly the best platform for it but I don't exactly have any use at the moment for Twitch because no one actually knows I have one. I do have one, I just don't have anything on it. I will eventually... I may switch to Twitch and use Twitch for streaming and YouTube for just my videos. For organisational sense on my personal... needs. Personally I do like... organisation. So that may be a thing, but yes, I am planning more live streams, especially when it comes to me just wanting to really, really do the get the details of the airport because I take forever, and I, as much as I do enjoy placing them, I don't enjoy doing it just on my own time. I do like to live stream it. Anyway, here you see me actually building the hotel. I do have this smaller building and you see me move it around, but I do end up removing this. I just couldn't get it to work. And it ended up just not needed. Now here is actually where you see me stop pop making the ditch for the, the railway that runs off the airport. There is actually a... this road here actually exists. I find it a really weird road, but at this point, it's basically where I start pathfinding all the roads, or the airports, like the main train station for the airport. And yes, there I will be using a ramp, which the ramp I'll be using is a, a, one of the promenade ones, as you see there. And basically, that's all it is. Is just me trying to get this to work and it doesn't work out eventually it works out eventually but yeah I just puff iron just try and make everything work lower I really played with that ramp for a lot and in real life it's actually a tunnel not a ramp but I can't replicate the tunnel because it's actually part of the actual terminal as much as I would love to replicate it I just can't well, I probably could, but my physical sense, I just can't because I'd need more assets and I don't want to potentially get more and more assets for this 
map. I'm already at 2,700. Now, compared to some people that have over 7,000 props, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm already starting to realize the performance hit. I am using a laptop, so keep that in mind. So, when it comes to performance reasons, yeah, that's where my Achilles heel lies. Now, here you just see me add in the the start adding in the rail to the airport and start and I start just really excited at the train station now you'll spot, I don't know if it was done in the actual and uh, no I don't think I did it on camera but the actual train station in the end um I really detailed it out and I'll show you that'll be shown in the live portion now here where I'm actually starting the process of uh, actually detailing out the entire road. Now I only do part of this on camera, I do the rest off camera because uh, it slowly to me re start to become realisation that this was starting to become a very tedious task and for quite a bit of it I just do the same thing over and over which is place these lines and remove the gap so it becomes this eye shape. Now, here I am just playing out how I'm going to do the this road, which I use. I just I just place a ton of pop of asphalt, and then bring the road like the lines out. Now I didn't like how the lines I accidentally just started there just did not work, and uh, you also see me I uh, just change the settings to. To the roads because I wanted to brighten them up and um, every time I close the game and reopen it I have to do this I don't know why but it's I, I just have to I'm just placing some arrows there now let's like say I, how I'm doing this airport is I am actually in a way building it back to front and because like I say the airport is British and is Right hand drive cars, so it's you. Know, it's a left. You drive on the left hand side of the road, where my actual airport is American based and means left hand drive. You drive on the right side of the road. Now, once again, left hand and right hand drive is actually dependent on the location of the steam wheel within the car, not actually which way you drive on the road. As I just pointed. Pointed out that you're driving on the right side of the road in America and the left side of Britain, but where the actual steering wheel is, is the steering wheel is left hand drive for America, right hand drive for Britain. That's what I mean. Anyway, as you can see, this is what I mean by how it becomes very tedious. I'm just literally always place. I've got all these lines. I'm placing all these lines, trying to straighten them all out, finish it all off now. There's a lot of lines, and I don't think they're equally distanced, and they're probably not. I try my best here. It, it was really frustrating to try and get it fully correct. And even with Move It, I found it frustrating to place it. Now, here I just, as you see, I just add in the final lines it's a kind of like real life just very basically done now this is where i mean it gets tedious is just this is literally me for about an hour was me just doing this removing lines placing them again trying to get it all worked out So yeah, just this is me basically. That's all I did for the but the, this portion and it's kind of really the end of this portion of time lapse. There is actually one more section before we go to the live portion. I didn't just see enough. There is a live portion as I've already previously stated. It's the third, apart from episode the last episode, which was episode. Three, 
I have really just done time lapses in cinematics. Now this one actually has a live portion. I don't build on camera, sorry. But uh, I do show you around. Now here is actually shortly, mm, quite a ways after the airport. And like all the details of the airport. And you can see I've already made the car park. But uh, this is what I mean by... It, it, for me, the car park lacks detail. This is about as much detail in the real life car park there is. That is it. It's really very plain, and then I realized it's like the airport it doesn't have to be this massively over detailed monstrosity it, because it's mainly car park outside. There's a foyer, and mine's really big. So. So, I will detail it, the whole thing out, I'll still try and find ways to get the odd tree in there, I'll work it all out and stuff. I'll work something, but I can't guarantee you that it's uh, going to be the most impressive thing on the planet. It, it takes me a while to uh, get this all straightened out. Now. This, um, I don't know how I'm yet going to do this inside area. Now, I'll probably do it with just car park spaces on the, like on the pavement type look, like I had before without the proper asphalt. I don't see a way around that. Now, here I'm just placing asphalt against the the road, try it. To make it look seamless as I can get it. Now, at, at this point I was actually on Discord and at the time when I was actually building this, Discord had actually conked out and... Yeah, that happened. Again, I was just playing with some settings, trying to get some things finished. Try to get things to look nice, and I slowly started realizing that I'm. Um, part of me was starting to realize like I am doing this the hardest way, and I think I ended up using the prop line tool, which recently got an update, and I think everyone really likes this prop line tool update. <laughs> now, at this point, I was looking at these two cars, and I was thinking to myself, they've never moved, and yeah, I was. I was just trying to pathfind path the. I was just trying to pathfind how these roads are going to work, like all these car parks, because I noticed cars weren't actually pathfinding to them properly. And it was actually driving me half insane. So I do spend a quite a bit of time in this time lapse actually just trying to fix these car parks before resuming my actual work. Whereas you see here, just me placing block bars asphalt. As I say, I do after a while realize I'm doing this the absolute hardest way around it, and I should actually use the prop line tool. <laughs> As you see here, I, I finally figured out that the prop line tool exists. And it really stops making the um, airport car box really stand out, in my honest opinion. I do have to reshape parts of the car park and get to look right again a lot of the a lot of my time lapses i am building and then all of a sudden i'll just go completely off what i'm doing and actually forget i was recording and yes and when i actually go back to make the commentary and then i realize oh that's there i should have removed that in post-production and obviously i'm currently recording rather than you know cutting the actual recording I will actually just keep it in I shouldn't but uh, yeah yeah I just let the, it go dark to try and figure out if there was any lights there isn't and it was kind of annoying I think I was working a bit off camera as like off the game but anyway I'm this video is starting to become 
the end of the time lapse is like only a couple more seconds, well, a couple more minutes after the time lapse. Obviously, I'm not going to do my usual because that's like the done at the end of the um, end of the live portion. So there's that to look forward to. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> here I'm just fixing up the those uh, car parks I was talking about, and yeah. And there's quite a bit of progress on actually getting this progressed and I may actually do another video on my other series I think I alliterated this again in the live portion that I I don't know if I did but yeah there might be other episodes of other series and anyway I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and here comes the real life portion you could say well li lifetime portion have fun with that Hello and I hope you've enjoyed the time lapse beforehand. Sorry it was a bit staggery. Uh, I had a bit issues with different aspects of the time lapse. Like some areas I actually didn't hit record again. Stuff like that. So it may seem like I worked on one bit and then I all of a sudden the time lapse moves to another bit. It will happen a bit. So anyway, in the time lapse, we actually the main focus was to start the car park and a bit of the exterior of the airport. Like most of the airport, as I said, I'll either just do off camera, don't won't really show it until it's either done, and um, or I'll do live streams, which I do want to do a bit more of, try and get community feedback. But anyway, what we've actually been working on is out here in the car park. I may expand on this, might add some like more shelters. Most of this area on Newcastle is just barren, so there isn't much for me to go for. That's because this actual building stretches out a lot more than it does here, but again, I'm restricted to what the game will allow me to do. Additionally, I think the road was a bit further in, but again, restricted because it has this. Um, interesting shape here. So I probably add, might add some. Well, I want to add some seating. I might add a couple more shelters. Like this one, or like these, just about. And yeah, I'm gonna keep it mostly open because a lot of people make these amazingly detailed foyers, airports, and then. It's like one of the basic fundamentals of it is it needs to be open so people can manoeuvre in and out the airport easily to coaches and that. And even though where it's mostly open there isn't really any coaches which I found even weirder. Again I might modify it a bit. It's not like I say it is my airport per se. It's not a one to one recreation of Newcastle if it was um I'd be taking a lot more care with how I actually planned out this car park. Like with all the replacements of car parks and stuff. I mean, here we have a drop off in basically really short term car park, and then all of this in front of here is the short term. The positionings and all that are correct to the airport per se in real life, but how I'm going to do everything is probably not. Over here, really medium and long term, and then it will go off this road over here and then reconnect it around here ish. Be an interesting concept. Obviously, I haven't finished everything this roundabout, I need to finish, but to do that, I need to plan out how to leave this roundabout and go to the big one, which will be here. Now, the big one here, which will require me to expand the land will be the main junction out of the airport to the highway going around the airport the road going to the aviation academy which will be built on a later date and also the access to the harbour area that's all going to be in here and then obviously the highway will go into over here go to the where the power plant will be and I'll probably put it underground when it goes under here, under the car park, and then resave it somewhere else. Not sure on that. But also, I will probably re-terraform all this into 
mountainous region and trees and had the trees back in and stuff. Don't plant anything really big per se over here. Now, fence wise, I again it's part of the air ball. I'll do off camera. And this is a thing I did actually off camera, which was the first roundabout. Just again for the generic style. This one's smaller, so I'll have to work something out. And you'll see that the roads continuously change between two, three. Over here, they actually change from three to four. Generally, I'll just use a try and use a lot of props to solve that issue. Be interesting. Uh, like here, I'll have a line that splits this from a two way into a three lane road. Really, all this does is so that there's a third line that just goes straight into here and nothing more. Also, this parking, just amazing. <laughs> and I worked on the hotel here off camera. Just had some basic stuff, some planters, some lights, some. I just kept it generically basic. I didn't see the need to overdo the exterior because really there isn't an exterior to this hotel, so I've made that completely up. And here we have the train station, which there's another one of these creations where I've just taken a bunch of props and put laid it over the original station. It's not exactly finished, there needs to be a road that goes over it eventually because that's the one that leads to here to going to the Aviation Academy. This road here, again, it's temporary, it's just so this temporary city function so the airport will actually function so you see it function like so you see that there's a KLM here about to leave and a jet blue now really there isn't much more to really explain in the terms of what's happening and I hate when this happens really just how I solve it is hey, I just delete one of the aircraft in this case I'll I can click on it I'll just get rid of the hop, just so traffic moves the end. It's, it's an issue when planes spawn, after a plane's landed, it turns into a mess. And th that's the only way I solve it, is just by causing planes to delete themselves. I've got the sim air coming in. Obviously, it's not a real airline, but... It's a cool looking plane regardless, and then we've got Transcon, which again, not a real airline. And landing, I think, is a Condor. Yeah, simple enough. And in the live stream I did actually before this episode, in the previous episode, I, we had done this. Like I say, I was live streaming the creation of all these. Just really, it's just the placement of all the props. Gotta love all these confused people. <laughs> Gotta love the confused people. But yeah, just placed all the props, like all these fans, the GSE systems, the, which is the A. I think the ACU, the GPU, the belt loader, got some baggage full. Basically, this plane just. Finishing up loading, I guess. Here, this is the this is stand 11, which is an active stand. So I've just got vehicles on standby. So, say when a plane came in, they would come unload it and then reload it. But obviously that doesn't happen. They just place the props. Got some catering vans, a a loader because of some of the size of the aircraft, particularly this Emirates, they do require loaders. Here we've got another belt loader, but active. Um, the weird one with Newcastle is it does have cones, but how it lays out the cones makes no sense to anything if they're kind of sporadically placed. And, but I kind of tried to imagine they had some place like just inform people, but they're only ever 
appeared in certain areas, so it's kind of what I did. Obviously, there is a stairwell coming to the back end of the aircraft. Um, I don't see this a lot in Newcastle is even the like, aircraft that have jetway connections, like this Condor, there would be a stairlift about to connect to the back of it, so passengers could be offloaded from the back and the flyer bus would come here and help with the unloading. I think I'll definitely have one of these planes have a flyer co going to it. Might be one of these over here, which you'll actually see here. This sim air is actually going into stand 15. Each stand has a number. There's, like, say that, as you saw, I think in the last episode, the episode before, there's a, is working stands, but there's only four working ones, so they're the ones I'm being careful with, which are stands 8, 11, 15, and 17. 17 rarely gets used because of its distance between anything. I don't understand why they use 15 because it's also pretty far away. Doesn't necessarily. Like I say, there is a few empty stands. I'll probably add some. Remove some, add some. I also added in this green air. It's one that wanted the Falls Airlines by, I think. I apologize again, I think it's this this week who's ours and oh I hate names. Uh I'll just I'll just do this easy one. The Bisquik Hosen. Something like that. Uh, again I apologize for butchering your name, I English, even though I was born in England, is not my strong suit. Spelling and reading mainly. Oh, I can um, butcher names as well. So I actually made some really nice props, but he made these, as they call it, the fake airlines. I used, I have the pack because it adds diversity of type of aircraft that do land, even though the same aircraft does like that land here quite a lot, which I find curious. But I also used his boneyard props to help me make this kind of scrapyard like appearance area in, next to the fire station which again I didn't uh, this is newly built so I think I don't think it appeared in episode 4 so yeah got the rhinestone boneyards plane I use this one because the plane mm, that's actually here even though it at the moment you could say it's actually really badly charred up does have a tail logo? Well, it used to. Um, the tail has long since been burnt up. I think they've replaced the plane that used to be there now. But yeah, it had a tail logo and I never figured out what the tail logo was, so I thought I'd use this one. It, plus, it's like its own little Easter egg, you could say, to Brainstone Island. Series by Flux Trans. Really cool series art. Really enjoyed it. Just around here we have the uh, main fire station for the airport, uh, training facilities and stuff. I just added a bunch of prop air. Uh, vehicles around. I will actually have to disable uh, parking on these roads. I have yet to do that on these ones. I totally forgot. Any need to do that. Yeah, no one's perfect. Um, got a cheap over here. But yeah, that's pretty much everything going with this ski so far. Hopefully I'll get this finished up, get the main road done, well, started, and we can actually start progressing out the airport. I mean, this thing probably has like, a lot more to go for it. <coughs> And honestly, I don't know if after a while, I don't know how far on this island I could go because I am limited by my hardware. And the guys in the City Skylines community have even pointed out to me that there will be a point where after a while I will hit either the prop limit or I will reach the limit of my hardware. It will be one or the other. And when that happens, that's the point where I can't play this map. 
as much as I would love to play it, if I don't have the hardware capabilities to do so, ah, uh, that'll be the end. But for right now, I get a steady 15 FPS at best. Surprisingly, it's a lot better than I make it out to be half the time. Especially when OBS is not on, I can actually get quite a decent frame rate, 20s, 25, but when OBS is on, it's about 15. Generally, it's about the same as everyone else's, though I've actually seen people get a lot better. It depends on how you set up the game. But anyway, if you've enjoyed, hit the like button. Should help with the channel growth. I've noticed recently there was a big channel, bit of a channel growth. It obviously the numbers like 26 subs and all that doesn't seem like a lot, but to me, I've been stuck on the run with 15 for ages, and then that growth did help. It shows there is an interest, so I'm grateful for that. And um, obviously, if you want to see more content like this airport uh, or could it, it would be really appreciative if you would hit the sub button and the notification then you know when I release more videos obviously I don't just release City Skies at the moment it's all I'm doing but I have actually got a I'm pretty much ready on the other series on my channel which will be the Lumos DB series I'm almost ready to get that another episode on that obviously when it comes to my um, content don't expect an absolute ton I have real life prerogatives this isn't my job so please keep that in mind when you're saying I should do more is this isn't my job and it will not likely ever be my job so when I do actually get a real life job but don't expect again don't expect a mass amounts of content but anyway again if you enjoyed you can also leave a comment say how I could prove how could I do this could I do that but yeah anyway I'll leave you with some cinematics that I have yet to make so bye